if you shower or brush your teeth or try to make your hair look presentable, here's some good news. Dollar Shave Club has a lot of stuff to help you out. Dollar Shave Club delivers everything you need to look, feel, and smell your best. Shampoo, conditioner, body wash, toothpaste, hair gel, even a wipe that leaves your tush feeling tingly clean. All of Dollar Shave Club's products are made with top-shelf ingredients that won't break your budget. You'll feel the difference. Plus, shipping is free with your membership. And here's a great way to try a bunch of Dollar Shave Club's products for just 5 bucks. You can get their Daily Essential Starter Set. It comes with Body Cleanser, One Wipe Charlie's, their amazing butt wipes, and their world-famous shave butter. And their best razor, the Six Blade Executive. Keep the blades coming for a few more bucks a month and add in a shampoo, toothpaste, or anything else you need. Check it all out at dollarshaveclub.com slash chat. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash chat. Independent in thoughts and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. I was running my business while I was campaigning. There was a good chance that I wouldn't have won, in which case I would have gone back into the business. And why should I lose lots of opportunities? As he also put in a tweet, this was very legal and very cool. Your response? (laughs) Well, whether it was legal or not uh, remains to be seen. It certainly wasn't very cool. More than that, it was very compromising of our country. First of all, that's Adam Schiff right there. He was on with Stephanopoulos yesterday. Why wasn't it cool? Just out of curiosity, I've had a big discussion over the last several days with people about how this wasn't cool, how this wasn't a neat thing, that we had a president that really wasn't a full-time politician that was trying to become president, still running a, a global business, and people are like, we shouldn't have presidents who, who have businesses at all. They should be, you, you should just, I'm sorry, you can't run. And I'm thinking to myself, are you insane? So what you want is somebody who's never been in the real world, who's only ever been put in a position where they've been essentially bred to be politicians, and that's it? You don't want anything else? If you're not around the political system, you shouldn't be allowed to be president? Because of what? Right? Because of what? Look at all the people on the left that are thinking about throwing in. Right. Right. From 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 the guy from uh, uh, Starbucks. You've got Bloomberg. Who knows how he's going to run? You have several other people all have successful businesses and or have been successful business people with ties globally. Should they not be allowed to run because they've been a success elsewhere elsewhere? We only want people who've been lawyers, usually just in name only. And outside of that, no. Look, I don't know what's going to come out of this. I, I, well, let me first. I have a feeling what's coming out of this Mueller investigation is indictments of 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 ancillary characters who were looking to line their own pocketbook and embarrassment in some ways that maybe they tried to uh, procure information that may have been damaging to Hillary, and uh, which is not illegal. I mean, let's be real. If you're looking to to, you don't think that Hillary wasn't searching. Everywhere, any place she could find or people within her campaign, any kind of information that could be potentially damaging to to President Trump. You don't think that she was willing to do anything? God, you know she would have. And nothing happened. Talking about something. There was no conspiracy, right? As far as I can see, no conspiracy. But Cohen... Going to the judge and asking, what did I say last week? They're going to the judge and asking for no jail time. If you literally had something to take down the president, guess what, kids? Guess what? You'd be getting no jail time. If you're asking after the fact, it's because you didn't have enough to get uh, get out of jail free card. That is so deeply compromising. And we have to remember what the, the Mueller investigation began as the Comey investigation was a counterintelligence investigation. That is an investigation into whether Donald Trump and his organization were compromised. And now via Michael Cohen, we find out that, yes, there was compromise. And that puts our country at risk. What's compromised, though? That, that's what I want to know. I'm OK with like, look, I, I will accept whatever comes out of this. 
But will anybody else? But what's compromise mean? That they had pictures of him, they had all of this stuff, and they're able to do whatever else? Well, he wanted to lift sanctions because he wanted to build something there. There was nothing built there. Well, he lied to Congress because they actually talked about it much later on in the campaign towards the end. And, and when really they said they got rid of it. Again, you're reaching. You want it to be so. So you're trying to find a way to connect the dots as best as possible. Doesn't make it so. If you had stuff, and I'm not saying there's not a Roger Stone or some of these other people out there that may not have something where they have the get-out-of-jail-free card because they've got enough to bring it down. But here's the other thing. Roger Stone said yesterday, I'm not testifying against the president. I got nothing. And if you want me to lie, I'm not going to do it. See, Cohen panicked because Cohen's not – Cohen's one of those people where <laughs> he's not – he's the first guy you go to because you know you're going to get a lot of information, and it may not be good information And uh, if you're in the mob, right? Because like, you know that guy's going to panic. He's not going to – there's some guys like in the old days in the mob, they just look right at you and go, yeah, I could do 10 years standing on my head. It's no big deal. Ain't no thing, right? I'm not giving somebody up. Cohen's that guy. Like, I'll tell you anything, please. I'll tell you. What do you got? You don't got anything. You don't got anything. You're kind of sleazy, but you don't got. I think Manafort's like, well, you know, I, I, I'm in trouble for the stuff that I did. But this other stuff, yeah, you can you can shove it, right? It is what it is. And that guy may pardon me, so you don't know. Cohen freaked out. So there went the pardoning on that. Well, it means that, that Paul Manafort was double dealing. Basically, he was going through the pretense of cooperating, but he was really uh, in an underhanded way supplying information to the Trump legal defense team. And of course, the president continues to dangle a pardon for Paul Manafort, which only adds to the growing body of evidence that the president is engaged in obstructing justice. Now it's obstructing justice. Remember when all of this started out, it was Russia collusion, somehow the whole the whole apple cart was upset because, well, because it's this, right? And I don't care about it. This is a funny thing. It's not that I don't care. It's just the fact that we're all trying to figure out, people are trying to put together the puzzle. And now it's no longer about truth. It's how can I steer this into a way that even if the truth doesn't bear out on paper, I can get you to believe something else. The left is going to, no matter what happens, people on the left are going to believe that he's guilty, period, case closed. People on the right, no matter what happens, they're going to believe that he's innocent, period, case closed. The Everybody else in the middle, we're going to kind of wait to see, but the narrative is going to be spun, and so everybody's going to get it. It's like we're getting two different newspapers inside of our tribe, right? Your tribe's getting this newspaper with different headlines to this one to the same story and different writing. That's the way people want it. It's more about the look than it is the truth. It's more about the social implications than it is the truth. That's what we want. That's, that is exactly what we want. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Of course, over the weekend, uh, Bush 41 passed away. 94 years young, was the oldest living president, uh, just a year older than uh, both Ford and Reagan when he passed away. A lot of people uh, are paying tributes uh, to to the president. And we learned out some of the last things that went on in, in, in the coming you know hours and moments before he passed away. This morning, we're learning more about the last hours of George Herbert Walker Bush, the 41st president surrounded by family and close friends Friday. Family friends say his last words were to his son, the 43rd president, George W. Bush, on a speakerphone, told his father he was a, quote, wonderful dad and that he loved him. The 94-year-old telling his son one final time, quote, I love you too. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know if you guys have seen the picture out there of Sully which was his service dog, which is making the trip with him. Uh, and there's a picture of him laying in front of the casket. It is, uh, it's very, it's just, you, you sit there and you're like, wow. Secret Service is going to stay with him today until, uh, uh, stay with him all the way until he goes in, in into the ground. Now, Producer Phil, you were upset about something because they're calling this Air Force One today, right, on his travels? No, CNN All Morning was saying, 
Well, you can see Air Force One there. Today it's uh, Special Air Air Mission 41. I'm like, it's never Air Force One unless the president's on board. Otherwise, it's uh, Special Air Mission 2800. Yeah, there you go. See, so, but he's going to be making the the, the trip to Washington where he is going to lie in state. Uh, he's going to have two funerals. Trump uh, actually uh, spoke, right? And let's be real. Uh, it's not like the Bushes and the Trumps are our are, are best friends, but uh, uh, he did say this. Angela and I were just talking about it. He was a wonderful man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Angela Merkel. Uh, he was an interesting character. Complex and human. He was vice president. He was head of the CIA. He was a statesman. He did. A, he and Clinton did a lot, a lot of stuff. Uh, he had his warts. He did. But I think he was driven. Here's a guy whose belief I think he put in front of. So he had his morals and his belief system, and that never wavered. Right or wrong, he was steadfast in that. And he was, uh, you know, he did a lot of things. And he oversaw a lot of things in his lifetime. Uh, and one of them was this. The end of the Cold War has got to be the signature. I mean, the fact that it came, the, the Berlin Wall came down and Eastern Europe was liberated uh, on his watch is enormous. And the fact that it happened peacefully. Yeah, peacefully. And, you know, people asked, uh, were asking over the weekend, what was surprising about that? And. And the fact that he always wanted to win, they said, but you know what? He never gloated. He never looked at Gorbachev and everybody else over there and gloated over like, ha ha, kiss off. We won. Never did. Never did. Because he realized there was stuff that was going to be happening with the Russians and the Eastern Europeans, that everything had collapsed. And it was very interesting. But uh, we'll be talking a lot about him uh, throughout the day. As, we, as, as again, we, we live some of the moments. We're also going to talk about how the media is portraying him comparatively to Trump. And I think that's what's very interesting about this. 323-538-2423. It's the Chad Benson Show. No fake outrage here, just the real thing. The Chad Benson Show. Born into a tradition of public service, George Herbert Walker Bush began his own life of service when he was still in high school. After the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor in December of 1941, he wanted to do his part, so he enlisted in the United States Navy on his 18th birthday. Mike Pence today, of course, is the uh, President Bush, Herbert Walker Bush, lays in state. Just watching everybody and the amount of people that are there. Uh, it is, it's, you know, again, I can't remember. Reagan was the last. And, you know, you look at somebody like Carter, you wonder how much longer he has. And then you've got Bush and Clinton and uh, Obama, who are all in good health and probably have uh, more than a few decades plus left. But... It is, uh, you know, I was, I was talking to my, my son about this and, 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 you know, what this is and seeing somebody who was our leader who is laid to rest, the male, the male is going to suspend service, not like it's an important season or anything. It's not, it's not, I mean, it's, it's, it's Christmas time. Uh, on December 5th, so U.S. mail delivery and retail services will be suspended. It is a national day of mourning. Though many of you listening will have to show up for work, and our uh, newest affiliate out there, KXNT, <laughs> yes, even in Vegas, you guys are going to have to show up. I know, I know, even clocks on the wall or anything in there, but come on, you guys are going to have to show up. I was asking my producer, I said, Producer Phil, do we have to show up? He's like, yeah, you got to show up. I'm like, oh, God, that's the way it always is. Each and every day, people, and you'll start to learn this if you're new to the program, we deliver you something, unlike the mail, doesn't matter what day it is. We will truly deliver something to you that makes us laugh and smile and makes you a hipper and cooler person on the streets. We call this our urban word of the day. It's time for the urban word of the day, fam. What? Right now? Time to get a little more hip on the streets. I can't understand a word you're saying. Urban word of the day. Now, the other day, uh, Producer Phil, you uh, took off right. He had a bunch of stuff to do. And we had uh, and Stephen Phil in for us. Very nice character. But he gave me an urban word. That was awesome. Are you ready for this, Phil? Drip or dripping. And I thought, what in God's name is drip or dripping? When you're wearing hip clothes, like you got it all going on, you're like, man, that person's drip. He's on drip. He's dripping. She is dripping. I have no idea. I am so far gone from any of this stuff. But 
just like you, sometimes I get enlightened and things like that. Drip or dripping is your urban word of the day. Thank you for saying that and dated urban slang so that I'll understand you. That there was the urban word of the day. We damn stretched your cranium. Today, this hero has returned to the Capitol a final time. Not on the front porch of our democracy this time, but here in its hallowed cathedral. Yeah, that right there, Mitch McConnell talks like, hey, guys, it's me, Mitch McConnell. Very interesting, again, to watch the way that everybody's fawning over HW. And I talked to a bunch of my buddies who were in the industry, and we talked about this. And I just think, you know, he was a different character. He he was a person who was able to, he put out his belief. This is my belief. I am steadfast in my belief. I am the kind of person I don't seek the line live. I, I am not braggadocious. In this day and age, it's really weird, right? Because of the braggadocious nature of everybody look at me, look at me, look at me, whether it's Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, it's all about me, 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 me. Even when he was the most powerful man on the planet, H.W. wasn't that. When the, when the troops returned home for their ticker tape parade in New York and D.C. and everywhere, he wanted no part of it. Not because he... he didn't believe that they should have one. Quite the contrary. He's like, I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. Because I didn't do anything. I don't deserve part of that. When the wall fell, didn't say a thing. Instead of gloating, he said, you know what? This is about Germany and the German people. We should be thinking about them. Little things like that that I think made him... Much more than just a president that we look at. It's a personal thing. I look at Jimmy Carter. I kind of feel the same way about Carter. Carter struggled. Carter was dealt some hands, and he didn't do himself any favors. But afterwards, I look at what the man became, and I can applaud that. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet us. Speaking of Las Vegas, did you? we didn't get to it last week, but there's a guy in Vegas right now. He's a pro poker player. And he is named Rich Al- or Alati, and he's bet uh, he's from Australia. He's bet Rory Young, hundred grand, that he can stay in a pitch dark bathroom alone for thirty days straight. Straight. So he's in there for thirty days. He's going to be there thirty days straight. You can live stream it. You can't see anything. His family wants to make sure. So here's the thing. Conditions. Completely dark. No electronics. No lighting uh, admitting devices. No drugs of any kind. He's allowed to have any type of food he wants. He has a bed in there. He has a shower. He has a bathtub. He has pretty lavish toiletries, Epsom salts, uh, sugar cubes, things of that nature, scrubs. I don't even know what that stuff is. But he's got that. And he's got uh, fruit, almond milk, cereal, Pop-Tarts in his fridge. And he gets stuff delivered uh, all the time on a regular basis. So uh, that way he can kind of, you know, has a sense of humanity, if you will. And a lot of people have warned him, don't do this, man. Don't do this. So it is, uh, it is pretty incredible. But he gets 100 grand. I thought to myself, could you do that for 100 Gs? Could you stay in a dark room, isolated from everybody and everything on the outside world, for $100,000? You can't see a dang thing. 323-538-2423. That's the text line. 323-538-2423. It's the Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent in thoughts and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. Thank you, oh God. For having endowed President Bush with noblesse oblige and ask that his example of service to others might be an inspiration to all Americans, indeed to all the world. Ah, uh, Reverend uh, Patrick Conroy today as uh, Bush, uh, United States, people going in there. Uh, H.W. Uh, lived a very interesting life, when you think about it, throughout the, the, the evening and the day we'll, we'll touch upon uh, just what an interesting life he led and how 
the media is looking at him. You know, and I was telling my producer, producer Phil, I said it was funny. Is CNN right now has uh, Cheney on, and uh, we talk about Trump and the way that people look at Trump. Cheney's got a movie coming out. Uh, Christian Bale and and producer Phil. I mean, you would not recognize Christian Bale, handsome guy. Here's a Hollywood movie star, rugged look. You wouldn't recognize him, would you? No, he looks almost. He looks exactly like him. Yeah, looks just like Dick Cheney, and I'm sure it's going to paint him as this evil, mad genius, and that you, you know that W was a buffoon. But I'm sitting there and I'm watching Cheney, and the whole time he's talking to all these talking heads on CNN, I'm thinking to myself, he's probably thinking, I could kill every one of you right now, and nobody'd say a word because <laughs> he is that evil genius. But uh, just you know, it's it's not often this happens. If you think about it, it is not often that this happens. A president dies. We don't have a lot of them. It's not like a royal. I mean, you know, it's not often that this happens. And the and the mail, uh, U.S. Postal Service is going to be closed uh, December fifth for a day of mourning. And I believe Trump ordered all flags at half staff for the entire month. Right? I think so. So uh, uh, he's getting a, a, a burial. I think uh, really befitting of the man that he was. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three. That is the text line. You want to text the program? It comes to me directly. I try to reach out to everybody. Arturo, what's going on out there? People out in uh, Las Vegas who are picking up the show for the first time. Appreciate you uh, uh, taking a listen, and we're gonna have a lot of fun. Do things just. We're fast. We're furious. We do a lot of stuff. Stuff like this. Do you remember that whole caravan? Do you guys remember that? It's a big story. And then it wasn't a story. Then it was a story. Then it wasn't a story. Then it wasn't a story. And it still is a story. And there's a reason why people. Instead of going to Brownsville, right, right, and trying to cross there, headed to Tijuana and, and try to get, to get through there. And what's going on that's still happening? Why these people are still heading here? What is this thing really, in, in a lot of ways, all about? And how are they being misserved? These caravans are very big because they're organized right. in a way that we're not used to seeing. Do you have intelligence that suggests that people are being told things about how the asylum laws work, how easy it is, in quotes, if I, will you just come with us and get there, and that people are being misled, and that's part of the confusion and, frankly, the desperation there? Yeah. No question. These folks were told it would be very easy. They would have transportation the whole way uh, through Mexico to the U.S. border, uh, that they'd be welcomed, and they could just walk up and claim asylum. Yeah, they were told that. And I, when I heard that, I remember working at a station near San Diego, and it was uh, one of the very first Internet stations, but it was a massive company that owned it that was a uh, that they owned stations in Mexico, and at one time they owned stations in, in California and they San Diego, and they sold them for a grip. They bought them for virtual net, sold them for a grip, then rebought them back. And we would run commercials. We'd have to put the commercials together for essentially both sides of the border. And some of the commercials, we do, we do English commercials for people who lived in, Mexi- in America who are of Mexican heritage, telling them, hey, you need to get back over and vote. And we put commercials together for people in Mexico telling them about some of the benefits and things that they can get over here in America, which I always found really shocking. And I think that's what's going on in a lot of places like Honduras. They're being misled by their own government because they are their biggest form of, of export is their human capital. Them coming and working places like this, you're going to add to California. It's a sanctuary state. Why not? Right? Because if you can get over here, the opportunity for you to come here to eventually for do whatever, right? Work and send money home, whatever it is that you're going to do, the opportunity to come there. Why, why would you go anywhere else but a place like California with an opportunity to have a sanctuary state status where you don't have to feel like if you get in trouble, even if they that you're really going to get in trouble because the state, for all intents and purposes, has your back and that's why many of them have headed down there but there's a reason they did and something we talk about just at nauseum here is failure 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 of these governments el salvador guatemala honduras and at times mexico we'll see how the new mexican president gets on and those people being frustrated they were not given good, uh, accurate advice by the organizers of this caravan who are, you know, doing it for a political purpose. Uh, the Honduran government had specified that the origin of this caravan was a protest against the current Honduran government. Yeah. It is a protest. What are they protesting? Well, the, the government is corrupt. It is a giant failure there. Absolutely a massive failure. Crime is through the roof. It's it's they're struggling and people are hungry and they're coming here and they're going to by any means necessary. They're going to try to get themselves here. I think what they thought, though, and what they've been told is it's simple. You show up, 
You ask for asylum. They take down your information. They interview you. They hold you for a little bit. They try to get a hold of a family member, a friend, whoever it's going to be. They then release you, and away you go. And then you disappear into society. Now, you'll hear stories, right? Like what we do is we try to give you the full side of of this, both sides of it. You'll hear stories that, oh, only 3% show up. That's a bunch of crap. Majority of them show up. Now, is it 90%? No. You're looking probably in the 60% range to 70% of people that will show up for the hearings. But those are 18 to 24 months later. Unless you've done something wrong, there's a good chance that you're probably going to get some sort of asylum, even though that's been cut down over the last couple of years. But these people are being sold a bill of goods. They are. They're being sold an absolute bill of goods. And we've got issues at our border and through our asylum that we just got to figure out how this thing works. And our system isn't working right now. It's broke. And neither side wants to fix something that we, as everyday average Americans who look out there and go, that's not working, they're like, it's working just fine. You guys are fighting about it. We're raising money off it. It's a political thing. It makes us uh, worth more to you. So to us, it works great. Those families go into the system. They get turned over to ICE. They have about 2,500 beds for family residential center uh, where they can care for families appropriately. Uh, But you can only keep a family together in immigration custody for 20 days or less. That's not enough time for due process to have an immigration court hearing and to determine an asylum claim. So they're basically mandated to release every family in it, whether they cross illegally or come to a a port of entry, no matter what the validity of that claim. Yeah. And it's, it's, again, it's a failure here, and we have a massive failure because we have a nation that really struggles when it comes to, we do, we we say something, you do this, right? You do this. But the reality is, is we, we say it, but we don't do it, right? We say, follow the laws, do it correctly, blah, 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 blah. And when you do, the people that do it right will be rewarded. The people that don't, they're going to. But nobody's ever punished. The ones who are punished, it's very rare. When I was down at the border in McAllen at uh, uh, about two, three years ago, we were down there. And uh, we were with our station KURV, and they took us out to to the Rio Grande. First of all, if you've never been to the Rio Grande, it's amazing. It's like eight feet across. It's literally, you could play catch in certain areas. And you could see all the people who are the drug spot lookouts right across the way. They're up on trees. They're looking around. They've all got like tons of cell phones. And, and you could see it. And, and they're, the Border Patrol is telling us, look, they show up. They're not even trying to run from us. They, they put their hands together as if to say, arrest us, arrest us, because they know what's going on. And when your system is that broken, that the people know what to do. That's not good. I was telling my friend today, man, you know what we should do is we should start taking out advertisements on Honduran, El Salvador, and Guatemalan radio. I'm sure it's not that expensive. And saying, don't listen to what you've been told by the government. Don't come to the United States. It will not work. This is a PSA from the United States government. Don't do it. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You could tweet at us. Love hearing from you. So, Sir Richard Attenborough. Yes, that guy has got a message for all of us. A man-made disaster of global scale. Our greatest threat in thousands of years. Climate change. If we don't take action, the collapse of our civilizations and the extinction of much of the natural world is on the horizon. Ah, yes, much of the natural world is on the horizon. It's very much so. Global warming is happening and welcome to Jurassic Park. I am only here to represent the voice of the people, to deliver our collective thoughts, concerns, ideas, and suggestions. The world's people have spoken. Their message is clear. Time is running out. I don't know who causes global warming. Do, do, do human beings have a... a an impact? Absolutely. There's 7 billion of us. Yes, we have some sort of impact. From building to all of this stuff, how much of it is destroying the earth permanently? I bet some. But is it to the extent that people think? No. I do not think it's that. And when you want to give seed control, and that's what I always try to tell my friends who are just so into global warming and we're all going to die tomorrow. And I, and, I, and I say to them, if you really think we're going to die tomorrow, 
if you think tomorrow that that if we don't do the things we're supposed to do today, and the governments know that if we don't change something today, Earth will be completely doomed. There will be no do-over. There will be no coming back from it. We'll have passed the point of no return. Then governments would do something drastic fast. They absolutely would. There's a lot that goes into this, and and my contention has always been the way that we approach it from both sides of the aisle is absolutely wrong. Calling somebody a denier and an idiot and all of these things is not a way to win over. And the other people saying, it, you guys are full of crap and, and it, it's not settled science. No, there's some science in there, but not all the models are correct. Some of them have failed. Just two weeks ago, a massive report that came out about oceans and several other things was immediately, in the Washington Post, pulled back and said it was wrong. The variables and the way that they were doing things and the models themselves weren't, weren't right. And somebody who's not even a scientist pointed them out. But can we all agree that this is our home? And maybe we shouldn't crap our weed. Maybe we should treat it a smidge better. Maybe we should do the right thing. I want to get off fossil fuels for a lot of reasons. One, I want better, cleaner air. Two, I don't want to give money to anybody else who hates us. Right? How about that? And three, if we can make something that's more cost effective for everybody, that's a win. It is a win. Don't care. They don't. Those are, but until we start approaching it in a way where we can sit down and talk with each other, it goes back to this is, you know, for all the, we're talking about HW. He signed a huge Clean Air Act in 1990. One of the big, it set us on a path of trying to sort this stuff out. That's amazing. Right? But we need to start focusing on it. And for whatever reason you're in it, that's great. If you're in it because you think the world's coming to an end and global warming and blah, 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 and you want to hand everything over to the U.N., well, that's on you, whatever. If you're in it because you think, I don't want to send people who hate us any more money, this is our home, we should treat it a lot better, that's fine. But we've got to find some sort of common ground when it comes to this, because it is important. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You could tweet at us. Earlier we were talking about, Producer Phil and I were talking about... uh, the hundred thousand dollars to stay in a room for a month in darkness. <sighs> somebody somebody tweeted in staying in a completely dark room for thirty days to get a hundred grand in prison. It's called solitary confinement. They don't get to eat what they want. No, they don't. And it's not. They're not in pitch black. Like this guy cannot see a thing. Right. And uh, uh, but he's right. That was what a lot of people are saying. Is this this you got to stay away from this? It's going to hurt you. And but British Phil and I are like, yeah, for a hundred grand, no. What what's your go to, Phil? You do a hundred you do quarter of a million? No, I think at least a million. At least a million. I a million can do bucks. It, but if I'm gonna do it, you go big or go home. Go big or go home. That's right. Because it's gonna take you I wonder how many days it's gonna take you to get your eyes back to. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Hey, the holidays, they are here. And you want to impress somebody, somebody you love, maybe somebody you made a mistake with, maybe it's anniversary, Christmas, birthday. And at that time of the season, well, how about doing something that they're not going to get anywhere else? Something so amazing, they're going to go, what? 1-800-Flowers. 1-800-Flowers. They got it for you. They got it for you. 12 peppermint roses, twenty nine 1-800-Flowers, 12 peppermint roses. But wait, they're not done. No, yes, there's more. Half dozen extra roses and a vase, completely free, up to 40% off the regular price. Peppermint roses are amazing and don't eat them don't do a tide pot don't eat them they look great they smell beautiful they look edible but don't they're incredible for that perfect person on your list you're like man i don't know what this is perfect it's holiday time this says this is my grandma this is my mom this is my girlfriend my wife my could be my husband he loves it whatever it is it's perfect absolutely perfect 1-800-flowers.com's roses are picked at the peak shipped overnight to ensure freshness 12 peppermint roses and a partridge in a pear tree. No, not really. Just a 12. Plus the 6. That's 18. Free vase. What are you doing? Twenty nine ninety nine. Winner, winner. 
1-800-Flowers.com. So you want to order those right now? You know you do. Again, 12 peppermint roses, twenty nine ninety nine plus another half dozen roses and a vase for free. Go to 1-800-Flowers.com. When you do, right-handed corner, click on it. What is there? It's a radio icon. Type in code Benson. You're going to get the deal. 1-800-Flowers.com, code Benson. 1-800-Flowers.com, code Benson. Hurry, though. The offer ends Friday. At Chad Benson Show's your Twitter, C-H-A-D-B-E-N-S-O-N, Chad Benson Show. Feel free to punk this punk rocker any time of the day or night. Reach Chad on Twitter at Chad Benson Show and on Instagram at Chad Benson Show. And oh yeah, the Chad Benson Show on Facebook too. Punk that. Big Reputation, really big reputation tour. Taylor Swift's recent stadium tour has officially broken the record for the highest grossing U.S. tour according to Billboard. We're talking over 2 million tickets sold, bringing in over $266 million. Previous record belonged to the Rolling Stones' Bigger Bang Tour in 2007 with $245 million. The Stones took 70 shows to hit that amount. Swift broke the record with just 38. How about that? That's huge, man. That's a lot. Uh, like, you think about it, it's... That that's massive. That's that's a ton of money, and she's playing stadiums, and she's doing it thirty seven shows. So you can pick and choose. And, and I think what they say last year was an Eminem who did the most per show because he only did like ten shows. He doesn't do a ton of stuff. Uh, and now you've got Queen who they're capitalizing on that. You know, I what I've thought of, and I don't know if they've done this, but I'm always wonder why haven't they done a Queen musical. Like, because you think that would be a massive hit, right? And Brian and Roger are all about that. Like, John Deacon, who is the bass player, Deakey, they call him. If you haven't seen the movie Bohemian Rhapsody, just read the, the interesting things about it. He was an engineer. He's a real nerd. He wants nothing to do with it. He wouldn't do anything with the movie. He really liked Freddie, and he wanted nothing to do with the movie. And he, you know, they're really upset. But they're getting ready to tour now with Adam Lambert. And that'll be interesting. I think there's a guy called Mika, who I thought they should have always grabbed, who sounds a lot like Freddie. Adam Lambert's got a great voice, but he's no Freddy. Who is Freddy, right? Who is Freddy? 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can always text the program. If you're new to it, I try to get back to everybody. I try to tweet back to everybody as much as possible. I get a lot of them uh, some nights, but I do try to get back to you eventually. 323-538-CHAD or at Chad Benson Show. It is the Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. in thoughts and punk rock in life it's the chad benson show he is extremely compromised the russians have the same leverage over him that they had over michael flynn and that's the reason that the former uh, attorney general wanted flynn fired and ultimately it's the reason that flynn was prosecuted the russians could blackmail flynn and now trump with the truth no, the Russians, they're here. They're coming to get us all. Uh, I don't know if I... Look, this is the way I look at the whole Russia thing. And and and, and it's not going anywhere anytime soon. Mueller is going to take his time. I think Mueller... He holds some cards. But those cards are just enough to make you think. Not enough if you're smart to make you jump. What I have been saying all along... When it comes to Russia, 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 is what do you have? I want criminality, right? I want conspiracy. I want true, hey, guess what? You were going to defraud the American people. You did everything you possibly could to try to defraud the American people of an election and stole an election. From from Hillary Clinton, right? Not that eh, we started looking at all this stuff, and there really wasn't any of that, but we got him lying. 
And and we're going to talk a little bit later about Kareem Hunt, who's a football player who, not just a football player, but a big-time football player who was released not because of what he did, did, which I think he should have been released for, I really do, but because he lied to his team when they investigated. That was the big reason he was released. He lied to his team. Ah, I didn't do anything. What did he do? He kicked a woman. He beat a woman. It was caught on video. He said it was none of those things, but it was. We talk about it all the time. It is the lies that get you in trouble. It is the lies that usually catch you, right? That's it. Martha Stewart didn't go to jail for insider trading. She went to jail because she lied. In this case, Trump lied to the American people that there were no business dealings during early 2016 when, in fact, Michael Cohn was out there doing the deal, or at least trying to do them. And they didn't succeed, but not for lack of trying. And not only Donald Trump, but his family also potentially are at risk here of legal prosecution. Yes, but for what? Obstruction for justice? Obstruction of justice? Probably not. But for lying? Potentially. But if you start out, right, like you start out, it's like this is what it is. And this is why this is the reason that Trump is was always pissed at Jeff Sessions. The recusal of himself. And even when he recused himself, he could have put parameters in there that said, look, here, here, Bob, Bob Mueller's what we call him. And uh, I call him Bob. You guys call him whatever you want. <clears throat> We're tight, but not really because you didn't even know me who I am. But it's all good. He could have said, hey, look, Bob, because I figured that's the way they talk. Bob, because that's the way Jeff Sessions talk. Let me tell you what you're going to do. You can investigate this. That's it. Right? Here's the lane that you're allowed to be in. If you go over here, we don't care. That investigation, we're going to throw it away. We're not going to look at it. If you stay in your lane, this is what's going to happen. I will recuse myself, but this is the parameters of which you have to operate. He didn't do that. So instead, it has gone from collusion to obstruction of justice, to campaign finance, to he lied about trying to build a tower. That is the stuff that people on the right are angry about. People on the left don't care what they catch them on, right? Right? They don't care. They don't care if they catch them on. Uh, it, it doesn't matter if it's Stormy Daniels or the Kremlin. As long as he's gone, they all feel it's a victory. I just want the truth. As much as we're going to get, because I don't think we're going to see all the report. I think we'll get a Cliff Notes version of some stuff. It'll be released at the same time as a statement that will fire back with their own findings and stuff. And in the end, it'll be up to you to decide what you believe or don't believe. And you can probably find a little bit of truth in both and a little bit that is stretched a little bit of a long way. But the reality is, if you like Trump now, you're probably still going to like him. And if and you think he's getting a, just, a, just screwed over. And if you don't like Trump, you're not going to like him. There's not going to be anything in there that's going to change any of that. And even if Bob Mueller came out today and said his kids kind of pretend maybe Maybe did some stuff, possibly did some stuff. But really, when it comes to him, there's no smoking gun that's going back there. They'll say it's all a lie. It doesn't matter, period. They're just after him. And that's the way it is. That's that's the way this thing is going to go down. I think it'll be embarrassing for him. I think it'll be uncomfortable for a day or two. And I think with our attention span being what it is, we'll move on. Now, there'll be investigations because once once it's once. Congress comes back and the Democrats take over, those investigations will pick up. They're going to look for his taxes, right? If they can't get him that way, they're going to embarrass him along the way. They are. They're going to do everything they can to make his life uncomfortable until he can start to make their life uncomfortable. And then what you're going to have are two of our three branches fighting, not doing anything for the American people. And boy, that sounds like a fun 2019, doesn't it? Doesn't it sound just like, wow, that looks like it's a fun 2019. So the question everybody asks is, do they have anything? If not these people, do the Russians have anything? The president, who has followed this drama obsessively, knew that his personal lawyer was lying to Congress about his business activities and stood by while it happened. Is that look like obstruction of justice to you? Kremlin knew he was lying, gave the Kremlin a hold over him, 
And uh, one question we have now is, does the Kremlin still have holds over him because of other lies that they know about? Huh? What? <sighs> so it is, right? That's, that's what it is. The Kremlin's got something on him. Well, if the Kremlin's got something on him, they're not talking. And if you go and look at seeing the sanctions he's put on Russia, they're far more severe than the predecessor to Donald Trump, Barack Obama. They are. So if he's looking for love and all this kind of stuff, he's not getting it uh, uh, in the way that most of us think. What is he? Oh, he's, oh, he's playing hard to get. It's always got to be something. It's always got to be something. I don't know what's going to come out of this. What I do know is jumping to conclusions isn't going to solve it, and it's not going to make it go faster, right? Whatever comes, comes. Could be tomorrow. Could be a month from now. It will come in its due course. But as far as these people that are going to jail, Right. The Cohen's and, and the Manafort's of the world. I said it on Friday and I'll say it again. If they had something concrete enough. That potentially could bring down the president of the United States and his family. Something that was criminal in nature. They would never see a day in jail. They're both going to jail. There may be somebody out there who's got that card, who's holding it, who's waiting for the Bob Mueller's here to see you. But it in these two characters. Speaking of Cohen. President Trump is slamming his former lawyer and fixer, Michael Cohen, writing on Twitter that Cohen, quote, makes up stories to get a lighter sentence, adding, quote, he should, in my opinion, serve a full and complete sentence. But the president's incorrect when he writes that Cohen's in trouble for things unrelated to him. Cohen pleaded guilty in August to eight criminal counts, including campaign finance violations, alleged hush money payments, which Cohen says he made at the direction of Mr. Trump. Yeah. So everything's there. But how much, you you know, how much do you believe? Because every the one thing that all of them have in common isn't Russia, isn't all of their contacts. The one thing that all of Bob Mueller's, quote unquote, witnesses have is they're all liars. Some are lying, is lying to save their own ass. Some may be willing to lie to throw somebody else in front of the train rather than themselves. Whatever's going to come out is going to come out in due course. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at me today. President Bush, 41. H.W. was laid to rest. Here we see the Capitol Rotunda, Vice President Mike Pence, Paul Ryan, Speaker of the House, outgoing Speaker of the House, Mitch McConnell, Republican leader of the Senate. They will all speak in this memorial service for President Bush, members of the Supreme Court, of course, also there, Chief Justice Roberts, Justice Breyer, Justice Thomas, all of official Washington coming together today for George H.W. Bush. Listen to the whisper. Sounds like he's at a golf tournament. And here we are. Uh, what do you think is going to happen from here? So uh, he's in the Raton- uh, rotunda today. Uh, he'll be laid to rest on Wednesday. Secret Service is going to stay with him. And on top of the Secret Service staying with him, Something I found to be just, just you know, a little smile in this is the fact that he has a service dog named Sully. It's filled with military wounded warriors. And so uh, to have Sully go on to be helpful to them is so incredibly appropriate and so typical of the Bush family to do this. Yeah, yeah, it's very interesting. Uh, he followed him. You should have seen this great photo uh of the president in the casket with the flag draped over it before it, it headed out to uh dc and sully was laying in front of it and it's uh people are remembering trump for a lot of things today the way that they looked at him and who he was as a president who he was as a human being which i think is something i think that you know when we look back and people are drawing uh you know they're looking at this president and uh, that's currently serving and who H.W. was and the way that they went about their business, uh, which I think, you know what, we could talk about. But the way that the media is fawning over him, it makes you just think, you know, you'll do anything to get a shot in at this president. You don't really love the former president. You look back on him, think he's a good guy, humanitarian, a lot of the things that he did afterwards, but you couldn't stand him when he was in office. President Bush is being remembered uh, on both sides of the aisle as a leader who was dignified, gracious, restrained, and resolute. And, and you get a sense uh, from, from leaders on both sides of the aisle that they are mourning not, not just the loss of this tremendous statesman, but the loss of a real political era, that he is being remembered as someone who embodied bipartisanship, something that is in such short support. Up here. 
Yeah, yeah. He he was a lot of things. He was he was a he was he was he was a man who was I think led truly by his heart and his beliefs, and he had a belief system, and he was just a, a very good human being across the board. And uh, as I was telling producer Phil, you, you look back at the things that he went through, not just in life from war and his love affair with Barbara that lasted 73 years, but raising his sons, having a son as a president, CIA director, all of the things that he did. It was an amazing, amazing life, and, and it should be celebrated. Uh, and when you look at today, uh, you know, we could talk all we want about Trump, but the reality is Trump is facing something that no president really has. He lives in a world of 24-hour news cycles like never before. And the scrutiny of the people's media network, which is Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, et cetera, et cetera. And that is something completely different. Would Kennedy look different? Would Clinton look different? Would Reagan look different? Would George Washington or Lincoln look different? I say yes. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show. Is your Twitter. I've got some for you. It's absolutely free. Period. Case closed. End of story. Free. It's a year membership to AMAC if you're over the age of 50. What an amazing organization they are. They're a conservative alternative to ARP. They believe a lot of what you believe, and they fight for you on things like common sense, immigration reform, and social security reform. They're helping people out there on Medicaid open enrollment right now that's going on. They've partnered with Senior Resource Network, and they're ready to help you, and it's free, one year free. Go to amac.us forward slash Chad. They don't even want your credit card. The on top of all of the things that they do for you politically as far as advocate, uh, advocating for you, they go out there and they get the best benefits for you. Retail, restaurant, hotel discounts, 40% off movie tickets, huge discounts on things like Disneyland, Disney World, SeaWorld, Legoland, things of that nature. And did I mention it is free? Free, free. One year free. Go to amac.us forward slash Chad. That's amac.us forward slash Chad. A-M-A-C dot U-S forward slash Chad. AMAC is better. Better for you. Better for America. The question is, are those real or are those fake? Chad Benson Show. Warning. No snowflake zone. Uninformed opinions are in danger of melting. The Chad Benson Show. It was the month before Christmas and right before December. Shopping, Christmas shopping. People are looking for Christmas trees. I really want a real tree. I think some of the artificial trees look really nice. When it comes to trees, here's the deal. Which one do you choose, plastic or real? Uh, I'm a real. I'm a real guy. i got to be honest. I, I like real trees. I think it's, I love the smell. I love all of that. Uh, I understand why people do it. I understand why people do fake trees. I just, it's never been my thing. And I don't mind, like, I've had them both. My ex, who hated my taste in everything, hence the reason we're no longer together, uh, she like she had to decorate the house to the point where it was like it felt like I was in like a like a high end department store, like I wasn't allowed to touch stuff. <laughs> it felt awkward. It's like this is a little sterile for me. Like the tree, like every year it was a theme, and it was always like, oh hey look this year it's super uncomfortable white. <laughs> what was last year? Also the same thing, super uncomfortable. And then she would allow me to go get my own like real Christmas tree, and it would be all seventies ghetto. But I I love that, right? I don't know why people do fake unless you're allergic. But some people are just that way. They're into the sterile environment of fake Christmas trees, and I've just never been that cat. Having a fake tree is a lot easier. This seventeen dollar plastic tree. It is in the box, in the exact spot it's going to be. Made from PVC and looks just as good as a real tree. And people like Alan have been using them for years. It's uh, pre-lit, which is something we really enjoy about having a fake tree. But like all products, there's pros and cons. Yeah, there is pros and cons, right? Like you, you, get, you, get, a, you get a real tree, you've got the smell, you've got all of that stuff. Part of it also is... Like, I like to go out and, and get the tree. I like to go. People, there's a hustle and bustle. You go on out. You get it. The other side, I don't want to take something out of a box and put it up. I don't want that sterile environment. I want to have, it's nice that stuff's lit. I get that. But I do like the fact 
that you you go and you you pick it out and which one is it and you find that tree and you're like and you go oh, can you spin it and you, that that to me is is part of the fun. So what do you think? Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is our Twitter. You can check us out. We got a poll question there: fake tree or real tree? Twenty five percent say real, thirty percent say fake, thirty seven say both is fine. Doesn't matter what you want to do. Eight of you, eight percent, you say bad hand egg. What say you? Text the program, 323-538-2423. He's a superstar football player. He's in the prime of his career. He lied to his team, and he's not playing. The NFL has issues, but how much of that is their problem? That's a question I think is fair to ask. We'll talk about it straight ahead. Jeff Benson Show. Independent in thoughts and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. Air Force One standing ready to carry President Bush's casket on his final trip to the country's capital. President Bush will now lie in state before being honored with two funerals, one at the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C., and a final service back in his home church in Houston on Thursday. And then he will be buried. The Secret Service is going to stay with him, as is the his dog, Sully who is sticking with him all the way through this. And it is just uh, a guy lived a great. Let, let's be real, right, for just a second. What a life. Can you imagine the secrets that guy's taken to the grave with him? You know, a CIA, all of the stuff that he had done, uh, his, you know, the things he did in war. Remember, he's the, this is what's crazy. He's the last president to see combat. He was our last president to see combat. Being shot down. Doing the things that he did, like, it's pretty damn amazing. It is. 94 years old. Lived a hell of a life. Lived an absolute hell of a life. And apparently he started getting, he he had Parkinson's disease. And the kind of disease that he had apparently had issues with his lungs. Where fluid would get in there. And they started, he started, he didn't eat for two or three days. They said, we need to take you to the hospital. And he said, you know, I think I'm done. He wants to get there to see Barb. And, of course, he had a daughter who passed away. And there's a great cartoon that's out there. I don't know if you guys saw it. Uh, Just a a really good cartoon of him landing his plane basically in the sky. And there's his daughter and Barb waiting for him. And it's uh, it's really touching. It's on the Facebook page. At Chad Benson Show, Twitter, C-H-A-D-B-E-N-S-O-N. So Friday, the news breaks, right? So you got an NFL player who got into a kerfuffle in a hotel that he was, I guess, like a, like a long-term hotel that he's staying at in Cleveland and uh, gets into a kerfuffle. And this isn't just a player that's like a random, like he's a third stringer who plays, you know, uh, you know, every once in a great while. This was one of the you know, top two or three running backs in the NFL, a guy that's a difference maker. He's 23 years old, Kareem Hunt's his name, playing on a team who's an offensive juggernaut. And that is the Kansas City Chiefs. They call him in to the office after a morning workout Friday, and they tell him, you need to go home. Stuff is coming out. There's a video of what took place between you, your entourage, and a woman. And what you said to us doesn't match what's on the video. We're going to look at it. Lo and behold, later on, they decide we're cutting this guy. And Kareem Hunt, uh, again, 23 years old, came out over the weekend and and sounded very contrite. I will be honest. He sounded contrite. Honestly, I just want to let the world know, you know, how sorry I am for my actions. And, you know, it, it's been a tough time for me. And I'm extremely embarrassed because of that video. I'm I'm definitely not that type of person, and uh, my mother raised me right. I was raised by my mom and my grandma. It was just us, and 
they've always taught me well and I know right from wrong and I'm always a person who want to see and you know, make everybody happy. Yeah. Uh, you know, he, he apologized. He kept trying to, to, to apologize. He kept saying things that, you know, that, that sound good. By just, you know, taking it day by day, bettering myself, you know, just earning, earning the people's trust back. And just, you know, not worry about it and then see where it goes from there. I don't know what's going to happen to him. The NFL has an issue here. And here's the, the NFL's stuck between a rock and a hard place. Because the NFL is always about protecting the badge. Roger Goodell and everybody's about protecting the badge. But then you're starting to see that even with uh, TV ratings up this year, ad revenue is down. Uh, TV ratings are up uh, pretty decently this year, partly because it's it's like watching Madden. It's a pinball game at times with the scoring, and it was exciting. Watch football game last night, but you're also in a situation where you know you've got a lot of women who used to like football, used to like hanging out and watching that kind of stuff, and fantasy football, and all of these kind of things. And what message are you sending? But then you say to yourself, "You're a business. This is a business. It's a privilege to play in the NFL. Not everybody." Uh, should just easily get the right to play never you got you got to prove yourself but there's also with that comes responsibility the video says it all if you've not seen the video he punches her he kicks her and if his entourage is there because apparently he wanted her to have sex with somebody in his entourage she didn't want to she's only 19 and i'm sure there was i'm going to say there was probably some adult libations involved in all of this and they had to like stop him from going i I don't i don't know what preceded that what led up to it but it was an it's an ugly look and i know if you read something it said so and so punch so and so and then this happened you're like well i don't i don't know what you see the video it changes everything Right. Changes everything. It absolutely changes everything. And then you ask, well, there's no criminal charges filed and there was an investigation. I'm sure they saw it. What is the NFL, if you're them and the team, like, what are you supposed to do? Are you supposed to allow the criminal justice system to do its thing? Or or not? Uh, it's a tough thing. It is. But in this day and age, it's about the look, and the look is awful. It is. What he did was absolutely vile and disgusting. And and can I first say this, too? We shouldn't always have to preface that hitting a woman. How about hitting anybody? Short of being stabbed, shot, protecting your life, being attacked, hitting anybody is a stupid thing, is an asinine thing. It really is. But we also are a country of second chances. And my thing is, 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 is he going to get a second chance? Is he going to get a second chance? I don't know if he's going to get a second chance. Not immediately. But then again, we also live in a world where success. Teams are willing to do that. We saw that last week. The uh, Reuben Foster, who has been claimed off waivers by what team was that again, Producer Phil? That would be my beloved Washington Redskins. <laughs> Who said, hey, this guy's 24 and he's got upside and he's, you know, this is his second domestic violence uh, uh, that he's been accused of. But the first one was by the woman who's accusing him again. But she also was found out to be lying and made up the entire story. But he was dumb enough to go back to her. So, boy, that's a win-win. I don't know if this guy is going to get picked up today because I got until 2 o'clock Eastern time, you know, uh, you know whether or not they're going to pick this guy up. And, and somebody, I'm sure, is willing to do it. Somebody, I'm sure, is willing to do it, but it's how much heat are you willing to take? It is. And what happens? You know, if you are a business, what do you do? They cut him. Man, in a day and age like this, and they've already got a guy on their roster, Tyreek Hill, who is another dynamic superstar, who in college, well, he punched and choked his then pregnant girlfriend and pled guilty to it so you've already got like a lot of looks that probably aren't good looks to have to be exact it don't really matter what happened i was in the wrong i could have you know took responsibility and you know made the right decision to you know find a way to de-escalate the whole situation i didn't mean to hurt anybody or any anything like that and it's really tough 
it's tough because like I feel like I let a lot of people down. I just really want to, you know, apologize to everybody, the Chiefs organization, the, my family, and close friends. Yeah, you know, people are texting in, oh, come on, he's not really that kind of guy. I don't know what kind of guy he is. People have moments in life that are awful, that are horrible, that are disgusting, that are, are vile, and they do things. And sometimes it comes with, with drink and being an idiot. And... Is he this guy? I mean, you know, Ray Rice, we saw the video, everything changed, right? We saw the video, everything changed. He punched his then-girlfriend, now-wife. We saw it. But people that talked to his girlfriends before that and his wife now, he's never done anything since. It was an awful moment. Should you be destroyed for a moment? In this day and age, we want people destroyed for a moment, whether it's a tweet, whether it's something you said just on a whim. We kind of, that that's what we expect to happen. Right. And some people, they can say certain things and get away with it. And other people can't. For him, what he did was vile. I don't think he's going to play the rest of this year. I'm pretty sure about that. But will he be will he play yet next year? The possibility is there. And the NFL may say, look, uh, we're going to suspend you for the rest of the year, even if somebody picks you up and we may suspend you for all of next year. Should they suspend it forever? That's a question. 323-538-2423 Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You could tweet at us. Love hearing from you. When people are texting in as we talk about uh, just the, the craziness of what's going on in the world of Trump. And, you know, he came back from Argentina in the G20. This craziness is going on as far as Cohen did this. And people say, Chad, didn't the Clinton Foundation continue to take money while she was? I said, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of stuff. There's similarities. But there's st- people are still trying to process how she lost. People are still trying to relive how she lost. Hell, I think Trump probably wakes up and goes, how the hell did she lose? I was doing all this stuff uh, because I figured I wasn't going to win. I mean, that shows you in some ways. How Trump think I think he thought what was going to happen? He probably thought I'm not going to win this damn thing. I'm not winning this. This isn't going to happen. I'm not winning this thing. Not at all. I got no chance of this. I got. There's no way I'm winning this thing. But he did. But he did. And for me, I look at this and I think. Is there criminality based on what I've seen with the Russia investigation? Yes, yeah, so people around them have done criminal things. Specifically tied to what they're saying? No. Lying to Congress, lying to the feds, yeah, they, that they've done. Right? That they have done. But is there anything that ties them to the point where this president is going down? I don't think so. Not that I can see. But Mueller probably has one or two things up his sleeve. I think in the end it's going to be more embarrassing for the president. As far as politically, but I don't know if there's any criminality here. I still have yet to see it. And that's all I ask for is proof. And I think in this day and age, though, people don't care about proof and they don't care about truth. They care about how does it look. What is it standing in the social side of things as far as the media, what people will believe more than is it right or wrong? Was the truth there or not there? 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show. Twitter, butcher box, butcher box, lads. Oh, man, I love, I think I'm having steak tonight. That's how I roll them. My household, that's why I want you guys to know that. I have a little steak tonight. Thanks to Butcher Box, that's what I get. Less than six bucks a meal, grass-fed, grass-finished, delivered right to your door. Every month, guaranteed to be humanely raised, no antibiotics or hormones ever. It is incredible. It really is grass-fed, mmm, grass-finished chickens, organic, free-ranging, right? Their pork is incredible. The pork, to me, is the most impressive because all of the meats taste incredible. The ground beef, all of it tastes incredible. But I like pork chops and the way that they do it, how thick they are, and it's like butter. You don't have to put anything on to try to choke them down. Boom, it's a winner, winner. Did I say it's less than six bucks a meal? What are you waiting for, people? It's a treasure trove of meat that comes to your house. Cuts that you're not going to find anywhere else. Premium meats that you're not going to find anywhere else for a price like this. Less than six bucks a meal. Here's what they're doing for my listeners. 20 bucks off, free bacon for the life of your subscription. Go to butcherbox.com slash chad. Remember, 20 bucks off, free bacon for the life of your subscription. 
butcherbox.com slash chad butcherbox.com slash chad at chad benson show c-h-a-d-b-e-n-s-o-n text the program 323-538-CHAD 323-538-2423 chad benson show Running with scissors sounds great compared to this. Say what? A little say what for you. So, Phil, it is happening. For those of you who don't know, producer Phil and I, we like to look throughout the interwebs. But one thing I don't have, but I know what is on there, and I joked about it the other day, is Tumblr. Wait, well, how do you even describe Tumblr? What is it? Um, I, I only use it for one thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's pornography. And I don't think it was set up to be pornography. Uh, Tumblr is a social media microblogging network founded by David Karp in 2007. Uh, and that's kind of what it's supposed to be. Well, as of December 17th, no more porn. And I said to self, doesn't that just make it Pinterest? Right? Because you don't get that on Pinterest, do you? But on Tumblr, that's kind of all it is. It's just porn. And uh, they're getting rid of it. So I don't even. And, and some people are really upset with like a lot of female, uh, like a lot of feminists and and stuff are really angry about Tumblr getting rid of this. I've I don't uh, I don't know. They said sex workers are worried their bottom line is going to be affected by this. <laughs> so so Tumblr's out. They're done. Goodbye. That's it. No mas. There you go. We're going Disney. Oh, man, that's great. I just don't know what you have. If you, That's it. You just have that, I guess. Say what? 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet us. We've got a question about Christmas trees. Is real or fake your go-to? Right? Is real or fake? A lot of you are chiming in, talking about, man, it's got to be a real... And then a lot of you are like, well, you know, I don't like... I get it. Like, if you get it early, right? And I'm a get it early kind of cat. So you get it early. The worry is what? That the needles are going to die, and you're going to have them everywhere, and there's bugs and all of these kind of things. I understand. It's once a year. It's your Christmas tree. Right? And that smell, man, you don't beat that smell at all. It is amazing. It is amazing. Uh, but most of you kind of feel like you can go either way, right? Some of you are steadfast. It's got to be a fake tree. 25% say real. 31, fake. 36, both is fine. Eight, bah, humbug. So to me, I, I, I usually do both. We have a fake tree, and then I get a little tree just because I like the smell and everything. Uh, although this year I think I'm going to go a little bit bigger. I just like it. I just think I just it's always been my – I just love the, the freshness of a tree and looking for it. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. And, of course, a lot of people today still uh, chiming in and talking about uh, – who George H.W. Bush was and how he really was a person who just, you know, was was a much different kind of 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 person. Very. He just he was humble and he was much different, especially in this day of look at us, look at us, look at us. He was the first president to teach me and many of us that in a democracy, sometimes you fall short. And that how you handle that, that is just as important as how you win. Absolutely. And, and you'll hear stories of, of him that, you know, not only the note he left for Clinton, uh, which Clinton still says, uh, man, that's one of the best notes I've ever got. That's even better than anything that old uh, Monica gave me. But some of the other things that, you know, not wanting to be a part of the parade for the military that came back after Desert Storm because it was about them, not about him, or didn't really say anything after the wall felt, said that we should have really be thinking and caring about what was going on uh, to the German people. Just a, just a solid human being. And in this day and age, that's, that's hard to find. At Chad Benson Show, Twitter, C-H-A-D-B-E-N-S-O-N. Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Into 
independent in thought, and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. President Bush is being remembered uh, on both sides of the aisle as a leader who was dignified, gracious, restrained, and resolute. And, and you get a sense uh, from, from leaders on both sides of the aisle that they are mourning not, not just the loss of this tremendous statesman, but the loss of a real political era, that he is being remembered as someone who embodied bipartisanship, something that is in such short supply up here. Yeah, it is. And you know what else he is? He's one of the, if not the the last president before the Internet revolution. And I think there's there's pre-Internet, right? There's PI and there's AI after Internet, which changed a lot. Clinton ushered in the Internet and the boom of technology in a way that we hadn't seen. It really started to blossom and take off in under Bush and from Obama Onward, we have a different world. Absolutely a different world. And it changes a lot of things. Allowed us to be more tribal, allows us to to say the things that maybe we wanted to say but we never would say in front of somebody or to somebody. And it's caused us in many ways to to be ourselves, to be Richards, to be jerks, to be just cantankerous people. Absolutely that has happened. Twenty four hour news cycle, which was really just at the at the infancy. During the Reagan Bush time towards Bush, then all of a sudden Clinton came along and it started to really come in. And then by the time it got through Bush uh, 43, it really had taken off. And then Clinton, of course, you know, we saw that with all the trials. But then then Obama and then boom, this is what we have right now, because without that, how would people remember Trump? What would they say about Trump? The newspapers, you, you don't get that kind of reaction. If you have nowhere to go with it, you could see something go, oh, my God, I'm so angry. I'm just, ah, because we're addicted to outrage. There's a great article in the Wall Street Journal uh, about addiction to outrage and how we have taken things that we really wouldn't or even shouldn't be uh, just out, you know, just outraged on. And because we have the the opportunity, we go and we do it. And they and it's written by Lance Morrow, and it says, uh, you know, outrage has become a signature emotion of the American public life. Right? That's why when Dan Crenshaw, you remember Dan Crenshaw about, what, a month and a half ago, uh, they made fun of him on Saturday Night Live, right? And that whole big thing that went, you know, uh, uh, that went kind of south, and, and, and he's the seal with, uh, with, with an eye patch, and, and how people were almost like, wow, I can't believe that he's not going to scream and yell and fight back, but he took a just totally different path to what he was doing, and it was like very refreshing because we are addicted to outrage in this country. We are. And outrage is also one of those things. We're at the point where... You can no longer just say something that is pragmatic and common sense because nobody's going to pay attention to you. You have to say something that is going to elicit a reaction because it's the only way to get anybody to pay attention to you. He said that he thought Donald Trump had, quote, a certain ego. And then he told you point blank. He's a blowhard. He's a blowhard. I don't like him. Plain and simple. And I'm not excited about him being a leader, was his quote. Yeah, but who did he say that to? He's talking about, you know, Bush and what he said. So you, you you can't just say that has to come out because, oh, my God, there's something there. He could say he's a blowhard. He's, he's, he's passed away now, and we can make this something, right? And we could do these kind of things because you've got to say stuff that's outrageous because if you don't say outrageous things people don't pay attention to you it used to be somebody like remember milo right milo was a provocateur so he said outrageous stuff and the problem is with the dance with that fire to get people's attention sometimes that's going to burn you when you dance with that fire i don't know what bush i i look back and i think to myself okay what would lincoln be like under the scrutiny of today's 24 7 news media plus 24 7 people's media because there is the people's media, which is us checking each other, yelling at each other, fighting with each other over our beliefs. What would that look like? What would Washington look like? What would Taft look like? People are like, this guy's boring. He's awful. Right? What would Kennedy look like? What would Reagan look like? What would Clinton look like? The scrutiny. Right? 
What would that look like in today's age? No. Bush was something different. And in a situation like this, I think people look back and are able to somewhat reminisce, partly because in reminiscing who Bush was and what he got us through and the things that he did both as the CIA, the leader of the CIA, vice president for eight years, and president and got us through the first Gulf War in that situation and the way that he put together a coalition that went in there and took out Saddam and 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 evicted them, but at the same time left other problems back there. How would that be looked upon today in this 24-7 24 7 seconds news cycle and people's media with social media that to me is very interesting and when you juxtapose the position of bush and then trump and the way that trump has used because you see not only is it about how people are going to judge you and the things they're going to say trump has done something that other presidents i don't know before or after will ever do obama didn't really do it Right. Bush, it was just at the infancy of it. But Trump has used media in in social media to talk to his base and to go after. His people that don't agree with him and to attack everything, that is something completely different than what you saw with H.W. He followed Reagan's pronouncement, 11th commandment, speak no evil of another Republican, versus Donald Trump, who has a polarizing relationship with Democrats, clearly fractured, but also attacks other Republicans who don't agree or embrace him. Yeah. You know, Mia Love talked about it over the weekend. You know, she came out and she said, look, you know what? Follow Trump at your own cost, at your own peril. Look at you, GOP. Follow Trump at your own peril. Women are fleeing you. Minorities don't want anything to do with you. The world is half women, and we're becoming a nation that is more diverse. What's that going to do for you? Bush was a very interesting person, indeed. And he did things that nowadays, partly that I think many politicians are afraid to do, which is reach across the aisle because they fear the backlash on social media would be huge, would be absolutely huge. We live in a polarized political age today, so divided, sort of optimism versus pessimism. Mourning in America, a kinder, gentler America versus American carnage as a message coming from the leader to the American people. So when I think of President Bush, I think of someone who crossed the aisle. Yeah, because that's what you did then. But the scrutiny wasn't there. And I think that's something that we have to remember. It was easier to cross the aisle back then because the scrutiny wasn't there 24-7 from the people's media, from the people's news network that continues to spin things and to look at. It should be the people's tribal news network because that's what we are. So tribal. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter, we're talking also today, speaking of 24-7 news cycles and the ridiculousness of, of, of what's happening, is everybody's already made up their mind, guilty, innocent, did he or didn't he? Is it the family? What is going on with Trump? When is he going to be convicted? He is extremely compromised. The Russians have the same leverage over him that they had over Michael Flynn, and that's the reason that the former attorney general wanted Flynn fired, and ultimately it's the reason that Flynn was prosecuted. The Russians could blackmail Flynn and now Trump with the truth. And what exactly is the truth? That's what I, I'm, I'm just, I'm curious. Will we ever find out? I don't know. But what exactly is that their truth that they have that is just so like, just, well, he, he wanted to, what, build something in Moscow in one of the most expensive places on earth. Moscow is one of the top three or four most expensive places to live. If you're looking at property and trying to build and you're a developer, of course that's a place that you'd want to do it. Somebody suggested they give a $50 million penthouse. It never went through. Nothing ever happened. So what exactly, what, what was the crime? Well, they've got something over them. But what is that thing that they've got over them? That's what I want to know. That's That's the thing. His sanctions, if you go and look at the sanctions that he's put on Russia, doesn't say that he's really uber-friendly with them. If you compare to what Obama had, there's something to talk about. We don't talk about that because it's something 
that is, well, we don't like this guy. I get it. I don't like a lot of the actions either. I think at times he is a blowhard. He has more than a few issues with the truth, especially over ridiculous things. But what I'm not talking about any of that stuff. I want to know what is it? And does Mueller have something that's so concrete? Because the people that he's rolling out, they're in trouble for real reasons that have absolutely nothing to do with Trump. Now, they lied. They did stuff. And that's the one thing. All these people have lied. So how do you believe a liar? Especially when they're trying to save their own ass. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. My pillow. My pillow. Check it out, kids. They're doing something amazing here for the holiday season. The holiday season. It's your holiday four-pack. So uh, I slept last night in particular. I passed out. The night before last, I was exhausted. A lot of stuff going on this weekend. So I, I passed out really early, and I I just thank you, my pillow. Thank you. My, my night's sleep have never been better, and it is the ultimate stocking stuffer. Now, you got friends, you've got family, you've got people you'd like to do something nice for. You know the people that struggle. That, oh, man, I didn't get a good night's sleep. You hear it all the time. Why don't you help them change the way they sleep with brand new my pillow? Brand new my pillow. Here's the deal. 100% machine washable and dryable, made in the USA, 10-year warranty. You've got nothing to lose. For a limited time, you're going to get not one, not two, not three, but four my pillows, two premium my pillows, two go anywhere pillows for half the price, free shipping. And here's a great thing: money back guarantee until March 1st, 2019. March 1st, 2019, you're not going to find a deal anywhere else like this. Call 800-983-4975 or go to MyPillow.com. Use the promo code BENSON. That's MyPillow.com, promo code BENSON, 800-983-4975. MyPillow.com, promo code is BENSON. You're going to get four premium pillows, four premium pillows, four of them, four. You ready for that? Yeah, pretty simple. You can keep a couple for yourself, give a couple away, winner, winner for you. MyPillow.com, promo code Benson, at Chad Benson Show, Twitter, C-H-A-D-B-E-N-S-O-N. It's the Chad Benson Show. Welcome to the Alt-Middle, where solutions live and ignorance dies. The Chad Benson Show. It's filled with military wounded warriors and so uh, to have sully go on to be helpful to them is so incredibly appropriate and so typical of the bush family to do this yeah yeah it is typical if you didn't see sully is his dog that was his service dog that was with him and there's a great picture i'm going to post it on instagram and facebook at chad benson show on the twitter as well and sully is laying down right in front of the casket before it took off today he's going to travel with him and so is the secret service until he's eventually uh, uh hw is eventually laid to rest uh it is just a, it's a touching picture really really and in this day and age i think that's a great thing and this is something i found to be and and, and this right here to me is uh, is a perfect example of the difference between politics where it was 15 20 years ago and how we've become so divided when you listen to him talk about himself in this. President George Herbert Walker Bush facing triumph and tragedy with modesty, humor, and uncommon grace throughout his life. He invited Dana Carvey from Saturday Night Live, who had mocked him for years, to the White House. Not going to do it. Wouldn't be prudent at this juncture. The president saying this. The fact that we can uh, laugh at each other is a very fundamental thing. It absolutely is. It absolutely, the fact that we can laugh at each other is a, I think the more that you can be self, you can understand self-deprecating humor, the more that you can poke fun at yourself, the more that you're okay with it, the stronger you are. And there's people who really, yeah, they make fun of themselves and it's okay. And some, oh, would they do it just because, no, I think the more that you can laugh at yourself, that I think the better it is for every, everybody, as far as not taking yourself so seriously, Right. He, could you imagine Trump inviting Baldwin to the White House? Do you think that either of them would take that meeting? I doubt it. I doubt it. Not in this day and age. Not in this day and age. And I find I find what the way that he went about doing things very refreshing. And I think we need more of that. And uh, we're not going to have more of that. And, and I don't even. I, and to be honest with you, I don't even know if it matters who the leader is. 
if we'll see that anytime in the near future, because neither tribe wants you to be conspiring with the other tribe, if you will. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. So, the U.S., holidays are here, you go to work, what's around? Potluck, cookies, all kinds of stuff. We just got through Thanksgiving, we're heading towards Christmas, you know, Hanukkah starts today, happy Hanukkah. It, it, there's food everywhere, like it's nonstop. It's just, it, it stares me in the eye, it's like, what are you doing, why'd you eat me? Just 12% of American adults are metabolically healthy. That's not good. That is not good at all. Researchers found that people, particularly women who were more physically active, did not smoke and had a higher education, were more likely to meet all factors. And the factors are glucose, triglycerides, high-density uh, lipoprotein, cholesterol, blood pressure, and waist circumference. Meaning... You may, like, a few of those you may have that it's okay, right? Like, okay, you know, you got a decent waist, but maybe you smoke, or your, your, your triglycerides are high, or whatever. You know, there, there's a few of those things. But only 12% of Americans meet this kind of good, because it's no longer like, how much do you weigh? Because right, that could be, you could be 5'10 and 200 pounds, and people say, well, you should, according to your BMI, you should be this. But you don't smoke, you don't drink, you're in great shape, you run and stuff. So that could be misleading. It's these things that matter. And America, we're only 12% of us, right? Only 12%. So it's one in eight American meet the standards of those five. We got to do better. And it is so tough this time of year because food is just everywhere. It is just Everywhere was just like, hi, how are you? You want me to eat you? Because I like, you're a cookie, aren't you? You're a tasty cookie. I want to eat you. 323 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter tweet at us. Is hate growing in America? America! Is hate growing here in Kid Rock? You're out of here. Why? What did he say? Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent in thought and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. Ah, Kid Rock in trouble on the interwebs for some things that he said the other day when he was live on Fox and Friends. Which, you know, he's, dude, first of all, he's a rock and roll guy. So what do you expect when you give a rock and roll guy an opportunity to talk? We can disagree and still be cordial with one another, you know, and just talk about things without going for each other's throats and protests and everything. And God forbid you say something a little bit wrong. You're racist, homophobic, Islamophobic, this, that, and the other. People need to calm down, get a little less politically correct. Yeah. Right. So he's saying this, right, because he's got I think it's called his big ass honky tonk restaurant or whatever it is. So there he is, you know, Fox and friends in the morning. They're there. And he's he's just he's being he's being a rock and roll dude who obviously likes Trump, has flirted with politics, says his mind, you know, says his piece and does what he does. And then he says this. And I would say, you know, you know, love everybody except I'd say screw that Joey Behar, bitch. Everybody. <laughs> Steve Ducey. Don't say that there. Oh, my God. This is a guy. I mean, come on. This is what you get, right? Like, he was joking, obviously. And this goes back to the whole joking thing, right? Like, he's screwing around. He's joking. I mean, lady. We apologize for that. I mean, lady. Listen, she's just got a different point of view than you do. Exactly. You know, hey, maybe we'll go on and I'll hash it out with her and we'll talk about it. But anyway, exactly, aside from joking, which I was, 
is just uh, go out and you know hash it out with people and have your have your uh, thoughts and ideas, but be able to still go have a beer with somebody yeah. and just say you know hey we all love this country and you know let's have different ideas but try to move forward and be more together and realize at the end of the day we're all americans we are all americans how great is that so he was replaced he was supposed to be the grand marshal of the christmas parade which he's been replaced now but by the way he says he's going and then Ducey asked me to apologize you apologize for that language right i did apologize for the language not the sentiment all right so what he basically means is hey look I'm sorry I called you, bitch. I shouldn't have done this wrong. But the sentiment, yeah, 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 that's what it is. Now, to Joy Behart and her credit, joking around, she responded. Now, you know, did he say I'm a, to call me a bitch? Yes. And you come for one of us. You Are came you? for all of us, kid, right? <laughs> so all I can say is this bitch and these bitches will be happy to have you on the show and have a beer. <laughs> And I bet you'll go on because I don't think Kid Rock's afraid of the view. <laughs> I'm going to go out there and say that he's not afraid of the view. What do you think, Producer Phil? You think he's terrified of the view? Uh, no. He, he, okay, so we did a Kid Rock concert, and uh, we got his writer. All right, so you, you guys, for those of you who don't know what a writer is, you know, you hear the famous things like I only want like blue M&Ms and stuff like that, these crazy things that people – that, and sometimes they just ask for stuff. His like – his was the easiest. He wanted like, like, like a bunch of of Coors Lights or whatever, like beer. I didn't, you know, I'm not a beer dude, so uh, that's what he wanted. And he wanted to make sure, <laughs> sure that he had a, a bunch of fresh uh, 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 wife beaters, if you will, for lack of a better word. <laughs> like, how easy is that? Because you hear about all these guys who want all this crap when it comes to their music. I, we need this and I need that. And if you go online and look up some of the crazy stuff that people ask for, they want like six trailers, their own private dressing room, pink M&Ms, blue M&Ms, purple M&Ms. They don't want anybody to talk to him. You can't look at him in the face. Da-da. Now, he was just like, yeah, this is what I want. It's pretty basic. It's just pretty, you know, doesn't get any easier than this. This is This is pretty basic. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. It's saying all of that stuff with Kid Rock and what he said, which was childish and foolish. And I think he was trying to be funny. And like I don't know Joey Behar. Uh, if you differ in her opinion, that's fine. Is she a uh, uh, how should we say this? A bitch? I don't know. I don't know. Like and what what does that constitute? Right? Like that's that, she could be a wonderful human being in person. She I've worked with people who are like on TV, they look great off off screen, they're awful human beings. Right? Has nothing to do with their political views, has all to do with them as a human being. But one thing's for sure in this country, and as we've been talking about it through today, as we look back at the life of uh, H.W. Bush and we look at what's going on with Trump and how polarized we are, that there are incidents that are happening in this country and that hate seems to be on the rise. And how real is is it hate is on the rise? especially racial tensions and, and, and religious tensions, or is it just because of the 24-hour news cycle and the People News Network, if you will, social media, that we're just more aware of it? Across America, racism and anger once hidden in the shadows, oh, now pouring out into the light. In Santa Monica, a racist tirade over a parking space, a message for Muslims in a car in North Dakota. I'm okay, going to kill everyone of these Muslims. A black army veteran targeting and killing white police officers in Dallas. A landscaper abused in Los Angeles. Why do you hate us? Because we're Mexicans? Words of hate which seem to be banished, now brandished more and more often. Yeah. Now, and and here's my, my thing. They were probably said 10 years ago. We all have a camera now, right? We have 24-7 access to anything in front of us that we can record and post out into the world where 15 years ago it might have been a hundred times worse but because we can see it we now think it's everywhere but the fbi says uh, hold on a second chad you may be wrong the FBI says in 2017, hate crimes shot up 17 percent. The motivation for nearly 60 percent of those, the government says, was race, ethnicity or ancestry. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying it's not there, but it, it, the reporting is is much better. And I think people are looking at things in, in a much different way. I think everybody, everything now they look first and foremost at a hate crime. 
because somebody did something to somebody is that, hey, well, I think most crime is just hate in general, isn't it? There's crimes of passion. There's crimes against that don't affect anybody on their physical side, but, you know, theft and things of that nature, drug crimes. That this is an interesting thing, because, you know, we're told every day that there's that this country is so divided that we're all full of hate. And if you you know, what was, what was the saying that a comic said that, you know, uh, uh, you know, not all Trump supporters are racist, but all racists are Trump supporters. And when you start out with a narrative like that, it's like, oh. Oh. Is, is, is that the way it is? Is now that everything is that way? This guy's named Ken Parker. He used to be a, a Klansman, uh, you know, and 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 he's talking about being that kind of member. And he's talking about the, the hate world that, that we live in. Ken Parker knows something about the hate that motivated Dylan Roof, a Navy veteran. Parker says he was out of work and without direction. He joined the Ku Klux Klan and later a neo-Nazi group. Their biggest selling point, making him feel he was important, part of a bigger cause. They were looking at it as like, we're going to have a race war one day and the more people on our side, the better. Yeah, we're not going to have a race war. It's not going to be any race wars. People, people scream this stuff, and that, that, but that's part of that that provocateur thing, that shouting, right? And when I hear that there's hate everywhere, and I hear all these things, I think to myself, no, there's not. It's not the way that you think. Look around, on your day to day basis, it's not. It's the it's because we're so overexposed to it. We're this is saturating everything. These kind of things, and it gets blown out of proportions. It's like with with school shootings. We've we've never been safer in our lifetime. As we are today, but you would think the exact opposite of that. But Steven Pinker, I think in his last book, was talking about the fact that we have become so used and accustomed to safety and to being in this cocoon of safety and of not having to worry about things that one incident completely upsets that, that apple cart, right? And then we start thinking that it's like that 24 7 when the reality is it's not. It's not like that. But when it's in front of you 24-7, you think that that's what the entire world's like. You think that that's what all this is. Well, there are pockets of it, but comparatively to 15 years ago, 30 years ago, 50 years ago, it's minute. And that's wonderful. And the fact that there's an uptick makes it things like that. we're back in the 19, just like it's 1905. No, wrong, wrong. But there is that sense because of the saturation of all of this stuff and the posting of of fake memes and fake news and, 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 and just a bunch of propaganda that's out there. At the time, Barack Obama was president. Some white supremacists touted the first black president as the number one threat to white people. And we would even joke amongst ourselves, like, hey, we're going to send President Obama a honorary membership to the Klan because he's our big our biggest recruiting tool. Yeah. Right. Huge recruiting tool. Huge. Just like he was the biggest gun salesman of all time. There's nobody bigger. But before everybody freaks out when they hear stuff like this, the reality is, is while things I think over the last couple of years have been uh, definitely, it's been more tense. Do I think it's as worse? No. Do I think people said stuff 20 years ago, 15 years ago? Yeah, they absolutely did. And the difference is now we catch it on film. But when you look at the incidents nationwide, I'm far more positive that we're moving in a direction that is good. Is it as fast as people want? No, it's probably not as fast as a lot of people want. But I do believe that we're moving in a much better incident, uh, a much better way, because I don't think the incidents are as big. It's just that when things happen nowadays, we have access to it 24-7, and we're not there, but we can see it now. Where before, it happened between two or three people, and it wasn't viewed, and somebody said he said, and then she said, and that's the way that these things are going. Well, now we can see it, and now we think it's everywhere, and just it, it, it's, it's permeating society, and that's not true. That's not true. Because you're told that it's everywhere it doesn't make it so. It doesn't. And I think I'm much more hopeful the negative, and I think because we have lived in a world that is that is changing, and I think changing in a much better way, and it's safer, and it's better, and it's more technologically advanced than it's ever been in the history of forever, I do believe that we get used to all of these things. And then when something happens, we start looking around for it, and we see it. It's like when you buy a car, right? And then you're like, oh, my God, there's my car. There's my car. You see it everywhere. It's, it's that kind of thing. Right. And I don't think 
it's an awful place. I don't think we're more racist, more misogynistic, more hateful. I just think because of the 24-7 news cycle, because of the fact that we have access to, to information like we've never had before and that people have agendas, it makes it feel that way. But the reality is, is because we're so used to things being so much better that when one incident happens, we magnify it. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You could tweet at us. Love hearing from you. Uh, ExpressVPN. I think last week we saw, what, 500 people, 500 million accounts were breached. I think it was through Marriott. You've got all of these people. If you use Wi-Fi anywhere, right? Like I travel a lot, so I use Wi-Fi. And I've had my identity stolen. I'm sick and tired of, of my, my data being used and g- grabbed and who knows what and where and who's getting it and why. And that's why when I decided I'm going to get myself a, a way to really protect myself, I said a virtual private network. And that's what ExpressVPN is. A VPN is a virtual private network. They literally have allowed me to take back my privacy. It is incredible. Right now, you're being tracked online. Social media, marketing companies, mobile internet provider, right? Your browsing history. What? Yeah. ExpressVPN runs seamlessly behind, like, so literally behind in your background, right? Your phone, your tablet, your whatever it is, your, your computer. There it is. One click setup anonymizes and secures your internet browsing. So if you're using Wi Fi or any of those things, you don't have to worry about that. Seven bucks a month, less than seven bucks a month. To protect yourself with ExpressVPN, number one rated by Tech Radar, 30-day money-back guarantee. What are you waiting for? Here's what they're doing for my listeners. You're going to get three months free with a year contract. Three months free is a year package. Again, seven bucks a month, less than seven bucks a month. How cheap is that? Go to expressvpn.com slash Benson, E-X-P-R-E-S-S, vpn.com slash Benson. Three months free with a year package. ExpressVPN.com slash Benson. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter, C-H-A-D-B-E-N-S-O-N. We got you a, a little uh, useless info straight ahead to wrap up your day. Chad Benson Show. Experiencing separation anxiety? <laughs> That's dumb. Check out Chad 24-7 at his website, chadbensonshow.com. And on iTunes, free. The Chad Benson Show. Show. Never feel lonely again. I'm struck with uh, the, the tributes that have come in over the weekend by the thousands, how specific they are. It's not, we mourn your loss. It's from the NIH. He did the Human Genome pro- Project from the CIA. He, he reconstituted the agency and brought back its reputation from individuals, one after another, acts of personal kindness. It's really something to see. Yeah, it is. It's it's been very interesting to see uh, the way that this is playing out, and a lot of people are, you know, are out there. And 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 I think there's some truth to this, saying that the, the the fawning over him in the media uh, is a lot of that's a thumbing the nose at, at Trump, saying you're a clown, you're a jerk. This guy did it right, even though they uh, many in the media were very critical of him. Uh, throughout his career, both in the CIA, as vice president, and then again as president. They weren't kind to him at times, and uh, they sure now weren't kind to him when, it, when his son was president either. And many people were very critical of him, but there, I think there is something to be said that the reason they're doing what they're doing in some ways, putting it on extra, is because it is a bit of a thumbing in their nose at, at Trump saying, you know what, you're a jerk. And when you die, you're not getting any of this. You're not. Look, Trump is Trump. He's the president. I don't like a lot of what he does and the way he conducts himself. Uh, In saying that, every president has their warts. Every president has their problems. And this president's biggest problem, for all intents and purposes, is a lot of it's self-inflicted, but it's between him and the media. But Bush was a different character. The way he handled himself was very different. It was, when you look at it, very statesmanlike, right? Old school, different, different time, different era. And I think when you, to to me anymore, comparing politics pre-internet in a way that we have the internet, not just, oh, I got, you know, you could dial it up, 
crying, you know. But I mean, pre social media, pre all that stuff is is totally different to what we have nowadays. And I think that's something also to take in. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You could tweet at us. People are texting it about Kid Rock. We're talking about the fact of what he said and called Jay, Joy Behard uh, a bitch, and and he took it back. Not the not the sentiment, but what he said. And and people are like, well, isn't she? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know Joy Behar. You know, but they can go on there and be critical of people all day. And and if you're a rock star and you're kind of you know a ruffian and you do those kind of things, that you're just some sort of bad dude. Uh, I think he was trying to be funny, and I think in the in the time uh, that he said it, kind of came out wrong. But it is what it is, and I bet you he goes on there because he said he wants to sit down and have beers with him. If I know him, he'll roll out there with a six pack and let's break a little beer and have a little fun. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. I'm traveling tomorrow, so uh, well, fill in. I don't know who it's going to be, but we will. Here's your useless fact of the day: Margaret Mitchell. She uh, she wrote this book called Gone with the Wind. Thirty eight publishers said no. She got it published. She won the Pulitzer Prize. It's still the highest grossing movie when adjusted for inflation of all time. It was the only novel or book she ever published. Talk about going out in style. Have a good rest of your day. As always, night-night, Jack. This is The Chad Benson Show.